Geico presents Our Town Season 4, a 30-minute podcast produced by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, here's your host, Andy Ockershausen. This is Andy Ockershausen, and this is Our Town. And I, I can't, I say this from the bottom of my bottom heart. It's so delighted to have Roger Mitchell on Our Town. Thanks, I Andy. mean, do you realize, Roger, that you're one of the most important persons in the city of Washington? You're the chief medical examiner for the capital city of the United States and not the world. Well, listen, what I made, a title. Well, listen, I made it to Our Town. So, I, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> So the fact that I listen, I made it to our town, and and the word on the street is if you can make it to our town, <laughs> then you might very well be an important person. So I, this, I, I I I'm I'm excited about being here, Andy. This program is so important that we don't have any commercial, <laughs> <laughs> but we have, but we do have some. But these are people in our town. But Roger, you have such a career. I mean, what you have done is amazing Thank to you. me because you're. You're a learned man, and you, you paid the price to learn what you're doing. That's it. But that is a great title, Chief Medical Examiner. Yeah, Chief Medical Examiner. Yeah, I'm a young chief, too, man. There's yeah, not many you young are. young chiefs uh, out here. Um, and uh, it's just good. I've been here about five years now. And But you, you, you're you not a native. You didn't grow up here, of course. But you went to Howard University. I did go to Howard, the Howard University. Did, I wonder you went to New Jersey to medical school. Are you from Jersey? I am from Jersey, born and raised. Uh, New Jersey Medical School is a state okay. school. It's Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School. It's, it's fantastic. A, a fabulous institution, Rutgers, yeah, too, yeah, right? It, it you got to be well. smart. You got to be smart it's or a, it's lucky. A tough school. <laughs> so, You're both. I think. I think on the bottom of my certificate, it might have said lucky, but we won't look at the final. Luck print. follows speed, Roger. That's and it. That, that's something I learned many years ago. You yeah. got to be fast in this world. That's it. But you have a background in forensic medicine, which. To me, is is so impressive. Yeah, and you continue to do it today. Yeah, and you know, I started forensics early. Um, uh, you remember the OJ trial, right? Um, oh yeah, the infamous OJ trial, right? Oh my yeah. And so forensics, really, in this country, was catapulted into the forefront surrounding I the OJ what you're trial, saying. right? I, 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 so I, this I country envision. really wasn't thinking about blood stain pattern and proper evidence handling, really, until the OJ trial. And so when I was, uh, I think I was in my junior year. In and medical I was, school? No, I was in my junior year at undergrad at Howard at, University. At Howard. And I was doing- Our town. Our, <laughs> Washington, D.C. That's it. Yeah, it's your town. Great, great um, school. Fantastic school. Um, and I'm a legacy there. My grandfather went to medical school at Howard in the Is 1920s. Right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I was there. I was doing science there. Charlene Drew. Oh, of course. Charlene Drew's Jarvis, father. Yeah. Right? Charles Drew. Yeah, Charles I mean, Drew, yeah. Charles Drew, and my grandfather were friends. That's what I was thinking when you mentioned your grandfather. Absolutely, they were friends. I have a I have a um, a guest book page from my grandfather's guest book, where Charles Drew signed that guest book <laughs> in 1939. Wow! Um, because uh, my grandfather was one of the first black physicians in New Jersey. And during that time, if you come to Atlantic City, he was in Atlantic City, you come to Atlantic City and you're a prominent African-American, you still couldn't stay in the hotels, <laughs> right? So you would find other prominent African-Americans to stay with. And Charles Drew used to stay with my grandfather when he came into Atlantic when was, City when he was traveling. Uh, when he was traveling. Well, so that, the Green Book. Where did he yeah. make the, where did yeah. he make this great discovery or this exploration that he came, that he worked on? It was, it was serum um, transfusion medicine. He was able to uh, make human blood um, compatible with other humans. So it was but really the in the World War, War, World War One, yeah. um, where now you're, sa ago. you're saving you're saving lives because men that are getting shot are able to get blood transfusions. That's Charles Drew's work. Well, he was a trauma. He was a trauma surgeon at Howard. Was was he One at Howard best. when he made that discovery? Uh, right before oh, Howard. Oh, yeah. Right before he got the uh, he's trauma so surgeon. Well known in the, the family, and I know Charlene. I know the kids. Oh and, man, she's they're fantastic. A wonderful family. Yeah, I just saw her not too long ago at the mayor's inauguration. She is, uh, gave her a big hug. <laughs> Charlene, she's president of a southeastern university. I think recently. I don't know how. I haven't seen her right long time but yeah, I she's know her part son, of the board on the UDC she's oh, on the UDC Jarvis board. you know Ernie Jarvis a friend of mine and fantastic his family is just great but 
Anyway, yeah. back to you, Roger. You're yeah. gra- you got it in your family blood. You got it in your blood. To be yeah, a yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a physician. My grandfather, you know, stories of my grandfather, um, you know, taking uh, pies and cakes uh, and Sunday Damn. dinner for payment. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, and 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 so when you're when you're a kid and you're coming up and you're walking through those streets and people are saying you're you're Donald Marshall's grandson. Let me tell you how he did X, Y, and Z for my mother, or let me tell you what he did for my grandfather. Man, those stories of service. He was a true family. Doctor. Yeah, he was a family doc, black bag, family doc. Um, house resident, calls, whatever. house calls. Um, he would deliver babies, uh, uh, appendicitis, do minor surgeries. Uh, and so is that why you decided to follow him into the medical world? Absolutely, because of the family, the blood in the family. Yeah, of because of the, the the stories of service, uh, and I know you know I that resonated with me, man. I wanted to serve community. And you left New Jersey to come here to Howard. How yeah. many years ago was that? That was in '92. Oh, Howard first, and then then uh, New Jersey. Right? That's right. So I was I'm from Howard. Yeah, I, I mean, excuse me, from I'm from Howard too, but <laughs> I'm from <laughs> I'm from Hi, New Jersey. Um, but uh, and then yeah, came to Howard for undergrad. Uh, and uh, met my wife there. Is that right? Yeah, she's, yeah. She a local girl. She's, she's from a local town? girl. She's from your town. F- fabulous, fabulous. Uh, I hear these stories all the time. Yeah. That be, when I grew up, the the great black schools were Lincoln and Howard. Well, my grandfather went to both of them. He went to Lincoln <laughs> undergrad <laughs> and went to Howard Medical School. See, I, I was in there somewhere. Yeah, you were there. Lincoln. You were there. Yeah. <laughs> Lincoln is good. You know, Lincoln was called the Black Princeton. You know, I, Albert I Einstein was one of my grandfather's professors. Is that? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That is fantastic. Great. Yeah, so, so you learn from nothing but the best. Listen, that's what so, we do. Uh, uh, but you decided then in your career not to go be in medicine for uh, medicine's sake, but you wanted to do something different, and you became a medical examiner. Right, because because like I was telling you, I left. I got exposed to forensics through the OJ trial, yeah, and then but, went and and then went to the FBI. I was an FBI forensic scientist before I went to medical school. Is that right? You were yeah. government employee then. Yeah, I was an FBI forensic scientist right there on Ninth Street. At the J. Edgar Hoover building. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. The one they've been trying to move, right? The one they've been trying to move. The you know, one they, Everybody wants it to move, but it ain't moved. It ain't you know? moved. I mean, that's prime That's prime real estate. Oh, but, my God. Um, so, you know, yeah. the building's worn out, of course. Yeah, it's an old building. It's an old building. I used yeah. to sit, you know, did you ever go on the FBI tour? Oh, yes, many years When you ago. go through the, 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 the window and you look at the, pe- the scientists behind there doing work, yeah, I was one of those <laughs> scientists behind the yeah. behind the looking under the Many microscope, them, right. doing the work. Yeah, they so still I did do that, that for two right? years. Everything probably electronic. Now, no, though, it is. we're still doing they it. Still do the yeah, study. you have to look for the blood on the clothing. So that's what I did. Look for blood. I uh, look for semen. Look for items of evidence on clothing um, or uh, other items of evidence, and then pro- get them ready to process for DNA. And so that's the work I did at the FBI before I got exposed a busy, busy to the medical place. examiner. I think, didn't they have a place down around 4th Street also, in addition to that 9th Street building? Because I remember doing something with the FBI. I went through the 9th Street building, watched mm-hmm. the shooting yeah. and so forth. Yeah. I think that uh, it, was, it was the judge was the head of the FBI then. Yeah. And then yeah. he was from uh, Mueller succeeded him and something like yeah, that. Yeah, I was with Louis Free. So Louis oh, Free. He, he went to the NFL. Yeah, Louis Free. Free uh, Free's a Jersey guy too. Um, but I, well, uh, he was Secret Service. He was, I think. That's yes, right. that's right. It, yeah, I know. No, he, he was involved in that Penn State thing. But I'm getting away from it. Roger. All right, come on, let's talk about. Let's it. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about our. You're town. too important in our town, and what you do is so incredible. Yeah. And since you've been the medical examiner, that's right. The changes you have seen have been enormous. I'm sure we have with we the have. public. Yeah, we have. We, you know, when I I was I was hired to get the office accredited. Uh, nationally accredited. Um, by, Were you with the FBI when they hired you? No, I was coming out of. Um, I was the chief medical examiner in New Jersey when they hired me for the here. state. Yeah. Wow. So I was the youngest chief medical examiner at the time. I was the acting state medical examiner for New Jersey, um, and they came and got me. Said, "Hey, we built we built this brand new shiny building here in D.C. We want you to come and um, get us accredited nationally and and make sure that our science and medicine is doing making doing it properly." And so I came, and uh, in the first three years, um, we got accredited, and we've been nationally accredited for the first time in the history that's, of this city. That's um, wonderful. And so Our the job. work that we're doing it means so um, much. It does because it brings closure to families. Um, they know that the the forensic medicine, uh, how people are dying, what they're dying from, 
um, is being done at the highest level. And so now we're sought after, you know, internationally for our expertise. I just got a call from Puerto Rico this morning uh, because they're still doing work down there uh, to clean up f surrounding the hurricane. And I got a call from them this morning asking what types of things should be purchased, um, wow. what type of equipment should, should, should happen. And that's largely because of the work that we're doing here sure. in the city. Your fame has spread. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, and, and you know, and it's funny because it's I like work you I like our versus your, <laughs> right? Because it's our fame has spread. Our, you're right. Because I have about a hundred people that work for me, mm -hmm. and um, let me tell you, the hundred people that I work for me are scholars and they're gentlemen and gentle women. And absolutely, they believe in what the community is about, and so that's what we do. Roger, we're going to take a break here, and uh, we don't have commercials, but we do need a, a deep breath. Talking to Roger Mitchell, yeah. Chief Medical Examiner of the greatest city in the world. The greatest town, city. Washington, D.C. And we're going to take a break here. We'll be right back. Technology Truths, brought to you by GEICO. Technology Truths. Truth, you have 14 login passwords, and you can't remember any of them. Doug 1, Doug 2, Doug is awesome. Doug is awesome. 1, 2, 3. <laughs> Truth. It's so easy to switch and save on car insurance at Geico.com. Doug is super cool and percent underscore exclamation point, exclamation point, 1985. Knew it. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This is attorney Mike Collins. Come to my seminar and I'll explain in plain English all you need to know about wills, trusts, taxes, probate, and how to keep your money in your family. I'll show you how to eliminate those dread death taxes and avoid the expense and delay of probate. See how our Reservoir Trust can protect your family's inheritance from lawsuits and the divorce court. Thousands of your neighbors have already attended. So watch the mail for your special invitation and register now at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town. Uh, this is Our Town. and Andy Ockershausen talking to Roger Mitchell. I made a mistake and said Robert one time, but I apologize. Roger. You have a big department. You're a very, very important part of our town. Your department, you, had, you were mentioning a, a hundred employees. That's impressive. Yeah. That is really, it's because that's your responsibility. That's right. Now, you got to nurse a hundred people. But somebody asked the question about how did you get approved? What did you do to be uh, accredited? How did you become accredited? Not you, had the city become accredited. Your bureau. Yeah, the, the office of the chief medical examiner. And so... One of the big things uh, that is required in the office of the chief medical examiner to be accredited is um, is board certification by its physicians. So there was a time in the district's history where we had physicians that were not board certified um, to practice forensic pathology. Didn't make them bad forensic pathologists, but they didn't get the paper. They, that's a, they didn't pass the they test. Didn't get the stamp. They didn't get the stamp. So one of the big things was is that I brought an accredit. I brought a board certification. Um, to that. I'm board certified in forensic right. pathology. Um, and then all of my physicians um, are board certified in forensic pathology. The other piece is the standard operating procedures. Now in our town, you got me digging down into the weeds, right? But the reality of it is, is that we all need a recipe that we follow to be able to do the work that we do. Right. And so we knew how to do the work, but we didn't have the recipe written down. So if somebody wanted to come check how we did the work, they couldn't come check it. They would have to come talk to someone. But to be accredited, you have to have your recipe written down. I do X because of Y. I do A because of B. Um, and so we wrote all of those recipes down, all of those standard operating procedures, and put them in a place um, that people could follow them. Um, and then the big thing. Um, I found the office. We were getting out our autopsy reports. 30 about 37 percent in 90 days well to be accredited you have to get 90 percent out of autopsy reports out within 90 days um and so that's what we had to do we had to create processes and streamline to be able to get 90 percent with with out within really 90 had to days make a hard, hard job to yeah get we done. had to move we had to move some people around we had to make things a priority that may have not have been a priority in the past and so the long and short of it now we're 97 percent in 90 days Right. And so that's an incredible. Um, and so we've been here. It'll be five years in February uh, that 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 we've been uh, we've been the leadership in place. Um, and so I'm proud to say that we're doing we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We have no, things no, that yeah, we yeah. need to work on. There's there's mistakes that we that we that we still tend to make. 
Um, a human being. Yeah, Somebody so, make a mistake. That's right. And so um, so we're not perfect, and we're constantly trying to build better quality systems, but we're doing a good job. Well, all your people, all your physicians permanent, or do you have people that you can bring in to, to work on certain things? You know, Do you have more than one person doing certain things? Can you use the private sector to help your department? That's that's a good question. So all of our physicians are permanent. Um, I have all permanent physicians. I have a forensic anthropologist. They're all district employees. Then, They're all right? district employees. Gotcha. I have a forensic anthropologist who deals with our skeletal remains, our bones, um, which which and that is huge because I don't know if you guys remember the story of the three women that were found in the backyard of a house not too long ago. Yeah. And those skeletal remains largely were ID'd because of the presence of the forensic anthropologist we have in our office. So we have some, we have some, we have very some great, unique, yeah, yeah right? very unique resources that are, are are playing a part. She's actually down in Puerto Rico, leading a a contingent to voluntarily um, leading a contingent. Uh, that is helping them with 57 skeletal remains down in Puerto Rico. So again, from the, from the storms last year, that's correct. Directly related to that. Yeah. So we we um, you know, again, we we're 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 uh, one of the best medical examiners busy. in the country. Now, and so you can bring in other people to help if you really get busy. Now, I don't want to say you're real busy now, but this opioid thing. I never yeah. heard the word opioid till what five years ago. Yeah. I never knew what it was. Yeah. I'm still. I'm, I'm still not too sure, but I know it's very pervasive in our society. Yeah, it is. I think Janice told you we were involved with the uh, disposal to get rid of opioids. That's good. The but pills. this is something new. This has changed your job a lot, I'm sure. It, it has, and it's changed our job in our town um, a lot uh, because, you know, in 2014, there were 83 opioid-related deaths in 2014. In 2017, there were 279 opioid-related deaths. Now, in 2018, um, we project because the numbers are still coming in because you know it's just January, but we're projecting about 204 opioid-related deaths. But still, it's still way, uh, way higher, twi than twice as much as 2014. But we're getting a handle on it. The city is getting a handle on it, um, and my job is to monitor how people are dying. The really the issue is fentanyl. Uh, Andy, fentanyl is about a hundred times more potent than heroin or morphine, which is the active component of heroin, um, and uh, it's in our heroin supply. And when that type gets in our heroin supply, some of our older users, these are older black men that have been using for maybe up to twenty to thirty years, uh, goes. A lot of them are veterans. Um, they're dealing with their post-traumatic stress. They're dealing with access issues in, in our urban centers and seven, a whole, eight, a whole litany of, whole problems litany in a community, of issues right? in a community, right? In our town. And so, um, that is, uh, why people use, but you, now you have this product like fentanyl that's a hundred times more potent. The chronic user, the user that's, dis, that's, um, dealing with this disease, um, can't possibly titrate, can't possibly use that in a way that is reliable. Um, and so that's why people are dying. So the, the the city is doing a good job. They just established a strategic plan for opioid use disorder in the city. And we're working to um, to decrease and save some lives in here. Well, I know your boss is out in front on that. She's been very upfront Absolutely. with right? Absolutely. seeing that as a huge problem. Yeah. Now, talk to me, Roger. This is not your purvey. You can't do much about this, but the murder rate yeah. has also affected your department, correct? You got a lot of... Absolutely. So, now. so you know, it's funny because I wear multiple hats in the city. I'm sure you right? do. So because I'm a physician, I'm also, my experience is in violence prevention. I'm a violence preventionist. So I understand programming surrounding violence prevention. I was part of the mayor's uh, Safer Stronger Advisory Council. I co-chaired it along with our D.C. Department of Health uh, director, Dr. Nesbitt. And um, we, we, we're setting out a, um, a, a long view of how to decrease violence in the city. It's hard. Um, and um, we know that law enforcement can't do it on its own. No. It's not a thing that can you can arrest your ra a way out of. So we have a new office called the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. That office 
uh, of neighborhood safety and engagement is doing uh, interrupter work, is working with young people um, that you are engaged. You have a liaison with them, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. I liaison with them. I provide them data um, and I support um, them in any way that they need me to support. So we're working on it. We're, I'm also doing a study uh, right now to see how um, severe uh, the injuries are. Um, that yeah. that are that are happening amongst these individuals to see are we dealing with more severe injuries? I read about the the the, the, <laughs> the, rate, the rate of people dying, but there are a lot of people who've been wounded over the months and days and years with all that violence on the street. We we kind of forget there's a lot of wounded people out there that have problems. Yeah. For for every, you know, for you know, uh, I think of what we call mortality or fatalities. It's really the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so, correct. So when, when we have this amount of of deaths, then there may be, you know, up to 10 more people that are injured uh, in a particular community. So gun violence is a real issue in urban centers and in this country, right? So, you know, we've been talking about school shootings all over the country. Um, we have, thank God we haven't had any school shootings here in the district. But the reality of it is, is that, you know, no matter where you come down on owning firearms, no matter where you come down on um, uh, making sure that firearms are legal for, for our amendment rights in our constitution, you have to realize that gun violence is a public health issue and there needs to be a way to control for it. There has to be a way for to control for it. I look at it this way, Andy, is that, you know, when people were dying from lung disease and dying from cancer, there was a big onslaught that said cigarettes had nothing to do with it. When people were dying from cardiovascular disease that are smokers, people were saying, how, how dare you suggest that cigarettes have anything to do with lung disease and heart disease? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, to, I to, to, that. To suggest now that cigarettes have nothing to do with people dying from heart disease and lung disease, you'd be laughed out of the studio. Because we know there's a direct connection Absolutely. between cigarettes and lung disease. Absolutely. Well, there's a direct connection between um, guns and the type of violence. And I'll leave, I'll, I'll say one more thing. The majority of gun violence in this country is not homicides. It's suicides. It's suicides. Public health issues. More people are killing themselves with guns than people that are getting killed by guns. And that's extremely important because that's a different demographic. It's a different Absolutely set right. of that people that are killing themselves and the people that are killing others. Um, and so it's important because we're gun control or let's say let's let's say it like this because people don't like gun control. Um, uh, uh, knowledgeable and equitable gun laws, gun safety laws are important to save lives across the spectrum of the experience in our town, not just um, in in a one part of this. Not this Benning city. Road. It's, it's right. Not seven and eight. It's I everywhere. Right. So what uh, information do you get in your office yeah. from what you study is going to help that? What information do you turn over to, to the powers that be? That, that can change the, the laws. So we look at all, we, we categorize all the deaths in, the, in all violent deaths in the District of Columbia come through my office. And when I say violent deaths, that's uh, homicides, suicides, accidents, um, uh, undetermined baby cases. They're all coming uh, to my office. And we issue out an annual report. That annual report puts out a GIS map. We know where people are dying and what they're dying from. So if we're going to develop prevention policy in this city, then you can utilize the data that the medical examiner puts out to know where you're going to set up that um, education, that training. education training, where they're going to set up that needle exchange program, where you can set up that access to education um, program. What, so you can utilize that and you can go on the website ocme.dc.gov uh, and get the 17, the 2017 annual report. And that gives you an idea of what people are dying from in the city. I, I'm not going to brag, but I'm going to brag just a little bit. Brag. At one time, this radio station was so important to the Washington community. I mean, like one out of every four people listened to WMAL. Wow. In 1971, because I was general manager and had just gotten a job in the late 70s, it went on. I was doing editorials live and radio. Wow. I would record them 
and they would go on the air. The first one podcast. Of, one of the, <laughs> my first podcast. He was the inventor of podcasts. Yeah, yeah. My Andy. crusade was get the guns off the streets. Got it. We did radio and television. Channel 7 was our company. Let's go. WMAL Radio and TV. I was the spokesman for the effort, and I did the, read the editorials and appeared in the editorial. Get the guns off the street. That's it. It wasn't about anything that's prevalent now. How many years ago is that? That's 50 years ago. Yeah, that's cyclical. And it's still... We can't get the guns off the streets. Yeah. It drives me crazy. Yeah, and 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 what what MPD is doing a good job at, and what they're working towards, is really understanding where these guns, these illegal guns, are coming from. And it's clear that they're coming, you know, from our neighboring states like Virginia that have looser gun laws. It's clear that the gun show loopholes um, that allows you to walk into a gun show and then walk out with a weapon or a series or cash. For Fifty years of we've weapons, known that, right? And so. You know, it's 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 going to take constant and consistent advocacy in this space. Another fifty years, right? And 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 but but there's you can't lose faith, right? No, you got to keep shouting. We got keep, we we got to shout keep it on. every day. Get we, the guns off the street. We got to get the guns off the street, and then also work in equitable access to education, economics, housing, and healthcare. Oh, it's all of that, You're right? right? So so it's 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 one side of the same coin. Right. Get the guns off the street and then create an environment where people don't want to use guns to resolve conflict. When you were going to school at Howard, it's the same problem you see now. Oh, it's worse. It was worse then. It was I, I worse then. I that right? with, with other it's about reasons, 400, but, 500 homicides yeah. a year. Um, but but we can't take that for granted. Um, we, we can't. We got to be diligent um, uh, in this work. We have a niece that just finished at Johns Hopkins. and She's specializing in. They get the guns off the street. She's oh, working fantastic. now for the uh, FBI or somebody. No, the International Police Association, Police okay. Chief Association. Oh, fantastic. And but that's what her project management is. Yeah. With a degree and going for a doctor's degree, and it's in public safety. That's it. Which is guns. That's what it's about. We need all the intellects. We need all the grassroots on board. We need all the po all the money pockets, all the, all the people with money that listen to our town. <laughs> They can, they can they can sponsor in, in, in six, seven, and eight and really help young people make different choices in their the, lives. The young people are going to have to settle this because that's old dogs. And my dog, you're still a young man. But well, I appreciate that. These I, young, I, young kids that. are going to have to do it, though, Roger. No, the listen. The young people we, coming up are going to have to do it. What is it I read in the paper about to stop and search? There's a furor over that in our town. Stop and search. I, I don't know if I can speak to the stop and frisk. Uh, policy here in the city. I don't. I don't know. I know that in you my, know of it. I mean, oh, I've, of course. I've read about it. I don't yeah, know what it, it is. It, functionally, in 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 there is a um, criticism um, surrounding policing that has people based upon their age, race, um, and other demographics profiling. Pro, there there is a there is a there is a concern that people can get profiled and then get stopped for no reason. Um, and so that's a larger question, you know, surrounding institutional racism in, in this country. Um, and I don't think anybody is immune in this country from that type I of agree. work. But it does um, affect public safety, though, correct? It could. It could. Um, you know, and I don't I'm not clear on how prevalent um, how it works. I don't know. Either. I, I'm not clear about how prevalent it is here in the city. I, it's, a, it's a new thing. It's the first time I've read. I've read about it in New York. And they stopped it. Yeah. And so that's the first I've heard of it in our town. So this is Andy Ocker's house on our town. And a wonderful, wonderful discussion with Roger Mitchell, the chief medical examiner for the capital city of the world, mm. our town. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell you about Tony and Joe's and Nick's Riverside Grill at Washington Harbor in Georgetown. Spectacular new restaurants. We spent a lot of time rebuilding. You'll love it. It's really fantastic. For any information, you can go online to TonyandJoe's.com. It'll be a wonderful experience for the whole family. Call 202-944-4545 to make reservations. Everything is fabulous. You've got to come down and have some wonderful food. Hi, I'm Charles Mann. For athletes like me, playing every down in a pro game is like getting in a car accident. After years of playing football in Washington, my body is broken. I've had countless surgeries and joint replacements. I've been looking for a non-surgical treatment since I ended my career. I heard a radio ad for a seminar about alternative treatment. It's called regenerative medicine, which stimulates your own body to heal and repair itself. No surgery, no more pain, that got my attention. 
I went to the seminar to learn firsthand all about it. Now you too can benefit and receive this treatment. This is the same procedure that pro athletes use to quickly and effectively recover from injury. If you're looking to eliminate your pain and arthritis, or if you thought surgery was your only option, take the first step like I did. Call 410-787-7250. Register for the next seminar and learn more about this breakthrough procedure. Seating is limited. Register now by calling 410-787-7250 and start living life again. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. This is Our Town. This is Andy Ockershausen. I'm laughing because I'm enjoying our conversation with Roger. Roger Mitchell is the chief medical examiner of the greatest city in the world. I keep repeating that because it sounds good. Yeah, it does. You, you have an envy. I envy your job because you're really on the pulse of our community in our town. Yeah. And that's fabulous. And the people respect you so much. Yeah. I know that because that's how we got together through a yeah. third party. Yeah, You're we don't. A, number man. We You're don't, the man. Listen, listen, we don't take that for granted, right? So to serve this community, be able to serve Washington, D.C., is not something that anyone oh. should take for granted. I know I don't. I mean, it's a true privilege. Um, it's a true blessing. We, 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 we're using this language um, on the break. Uh, surrounding <laughs> blessings and uh, you know uh, I'm a minister in the local oh, church. Oh I knew we're going to get to yeah. that. Yeah and you know I couldn't I couldn't let it, let it go without bringing it up um, and and the church and you got to know this church because you're our town uh, New Bethel Baptist Church. Oh big. Uh, Walter Fontroy's old church. Oh yeah we know. Right? Walter's so, a very dear friend of mine absolutely. from the old days. Yeah absolutely and so uh, Dexter Nuttall is our pastor I'm one of his ministers I just took over the prison ministry for the church um, and the work that we're doing there um, to, to continue to serve uh, this community uh, is extremely important. Where did you get your training from the ministry? So I trained under him, Dexter Nuttall, um, and I'm, uh, I am I got licensed. You college. You were, I noticed no, you I didn't. I, I, I got licensed under him, and I'm actually um, applying for seminary right now. Um, so I'll be right, going to seminary in the, in the fall. It'll be an online course. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to seminary to, to really, really do this work. Uh, because it's not enough for me just to count them, right? It's not enough for me just to speak to families. Um, it's extremely infor- important for me to be on, on on sides where we can really promote hope um, in a way that, that, that frees people um, so that we can make the best choices in this city. So after this, it's uh, aerospace engineering and then nuclear <laughs> physics, right? I, listen, <laughs> and, then Hollywood, miss anything, Ken. and then Hollywood. <laughs> listen, listen, you know, I, I, yeah, on the you, break. Your life story. Well, on the, on, the, on the break, we talked about it, right? They said, you know, they, you know, you guys can't see me on the podcast, but they said I look young. And, and the reality of the, of the thing is, I said I was a throwback. You know, back in the day when there was no TV and there was no distractions, uh, men and women of any caliber read. Right. They read, they wrote, they contemplated, they had relationships and uh, it's time to get back to that. But you're so right, because there's a whole generation out there has no idea what you're talking about when you're talking about reading. <laughs> well, if they don't have it in their hand. They don't yeah. know what a book is. Yeah, it's hard. It's and hard. Your kids are going to feel that, too, if, if they haven't already. As we say Everybody's that on Everybody's on the digital age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's important. It's important. And that's the really the only way you can have capacity. Right. Is that if you take if you deplug and really take the time um, to read, to write, to contemplate, that's where you start getting inspiration to do things that you have no business doing, um, <laughs> right. like living to 90 years old and having a podcast. I mean, how great, how great is that? Right. And, and I, I want you I want listen, I want to come to the party. I got a I young know wife. Good. She's the one who keeps me alive, bro. I mean, that's my plan. Listen, 100, 100. For 100. Why not? My brother did 101, so I, if he did it, I can do it. 102 for you. One of the things that impresses me about you is you're you're a 20th century guy, but you're really a 22 century guy. Oh man! Because you grew up learning with books and pencils and erasers and paper. That's right. And this new generation doesn't have that anymore. Yeah. Well, we're. And I think that's sad. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it, it it's it's it may be sad, but you know, I I I'm inspired because I have three children and oh, and and my they test you my, every day. My three children, my 12 year old, my 14 year old, my 16 year old. They have something that we never had, and they have um, a global world view of themselves. And there's something to be said about that empowerment that comes with having a global world view that they they know that they can make a difference in a moment. Um, and and so I instill in my kids, even though it's different, 
um, I instill in my kids that they can uh, make a difference uh, in the space that they are. And they might not need a pencil to do it. Um, but I, I inspire Anything's them to possible, do it. That's Roger. Right. I don't put it down. I'm just yeah. saying it. No, you know. I like, I like to... I, I see kids apply for jobs and talk to them. They hardly can write their name. Yeah. To me, that's sad. Yeah, it is. I think if indeed that's the case, if you can write, you can read. Yeah, and that's well, what makes a difference. Well, you know, we know that reading, and we talked about violence yeah. earlier. And reading, you can write that way too. Of course. Yeah, of course. And reading is, you know, the number one predictor of whether or not you're going to have good outcomes. Right? Always, always. So the ability right. to read and read at a high level is that, and so literacy. Is something that in, 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 in our town we need to make sure that we promote. Roger, I can't thank you enough for what you have brought to our town and what you continue to bring. <laughs> you brought it forward. Wow. You have done so much for that department that people know about it and yeah. they tell me about it. And that's how, you yeah. know, and that's you. That's Roger Mitchell. Well, it's is not the, the department, it's you. Yeah, well, you. I like to say that. And I like the name of I'll your. I'll tell the mayor when listen, I Listen, I like, I like the name of your program. Because it's, it's it's our town, and it's definitely not my medical examiner's office. I it's have people. Our, that, office. Our, our people there are doing fantastic work, um, and it's them doing the work. My job is to come on 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 shows like this while they're at work, <laughs> um, uh, and 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 tell people how good it is. But what I won't do is take all the credit because um, because it's them that are doing the work. You're a wonderful man, Roger, and, and thank you so much for being on our town. We will stay with you, and anything we can do to help you. In our own little way. Absolutely. But there used to be a powerful way to do it, but we are with you all the way. I appreciate it. you got to get the guns off the streets. Yes, sir. I'll never stop saying that, never stop doing it. But Roger Mitchell, you got a wonderful family. Roger, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you, brother. And your family. We're going to spread this word all over everybody. Bless you, We're going to do something about the opioid, too. Yeah, we're, we're going to do it quitting, all. We're not Roger. Let's start. <laughs> My brother. This is our town. This has been a wonderful conversation with Roger Mitchell. What a great thing that our town has, Roger Mitchell. You've been listening to Our Town Season 4, presented by Geico, our hometown favorite, with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. Drop us a line with your comments or suggestions. See us on Facebook or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to Ken Hunter, our technical director, and WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C., And thanks to GEICO, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance.